Good morning. You all hear me all right? Thank you. So still a couple of people coming in. All right. So let's get started. I'm absolutely thrilled to kick off the Broad Institute Machine Learning for Drug Discovery Symposium 2023. Um, thanks for showing up this morning. I hope the breakfast and coffee helped you charged up. I am Sumaya Iqbal. I lead the Bioinformatics and Computational Biology Group at the Center for Development of Therapeutics at the Broad Institute. So I want to start um, by thanking this incredible organizing committee for their brilliant effort throughout the year to make this event possible for the second time. Uh, we also have a great team of volunteers um, helping all of us through registration, navigation, as you have um, experienced, and I'm thankful for each of them. And here is our advisory committee, um, and a big thanks to all of them Holly Suter and Carpenter, Connor Cooley, Eric Siegel, um, Shantanu Singh, Pat Walters, Weijun Wang, um, and uh, Anthony Filipakis. Thanks to our sponsors, Wuxi's, Aptek, um, Tandem AI, and Celerity for the financial support. And thanks to the Broad Institute for hosting the event. Finally, thanks to our stellar line of speakers who have come to share their exciting research. Some of them also have traveled a long way, so thank you. I would also like to mention that we received a substantially high number of top quality abstracts this year. The top 25 made it to the list of selected posters and the top four are invited for the lightning talk. So here are our lightning talk winners Additionally, we will select four best posters today and we will announce them at the end of the afternoon session. So a big shout out to all who submitted their abstracts. And now I will quickly go over some housekeeping items. You all should have received um, a program with, okay. Okay, so I was uh, hoping something to show up in the last slide, which is not here. That doesn't um, matter because uh, I have the program with me. So there was a screenshot of this program. So you all should have received um, a program when you have uh, picked up your badge in the registration desk. The packet also includes a list of poster titles, including a QR code that you can scan to access the documents with the full abstracts if you want to read. There will be time for questions after each talk. If you are in person, please come down to the microphone on the either side of the seats. Online attendees will put questions in the chat and we have a committee member in the room to read uh, those questions. For the lightning talks, uh, we will go through all four presentations and we'll take questions at the end. Our coffee and snack breaks will be outside in the auditorium where you had your breakfast this morning and we have restrooms just on the other side of the security desk. Lunch will start at noon as indicated in your program. For lunch, we will go up to the second floor um, to the Monando conference room Please take the elevators, and there will be someone to help you navigate through the elevators. We have seating arrangements inside and outside the Monando conference rooms with beverages served in the hallway. Lunch break ends at 1.30, and we will promptly start our afternoon session right away, so please come back in time. The poster session will take place at the end of the day during the reception. Posters will be at the atrium and also at the mezzanine um, in the second floor, and you can take the stairs to go over and look at the posters. So, all right, I think that's all for housekeeping. 
And so now it's the time for me to invite Alex Bergen, Senior Director of the Center for Development of Therapeutics at the Broad Institute on the floor for an opening remark. Great, thank you. <laughs> Welcome everybody. Um, I'm not exactly sure why I was chosen to give open remarks. I'm uh, very honored to be tangentially involved in this community, um, but I'm not a computer scientist. I think of myself as an entomologist, a drug hunter. Um, but I did publish in 2012, a paper, co-authored a paper with uh, artificial networks to detect beige proteins. And I have to admit, back 11 years ago, 12 years ago, I thought that was a really cute trick. I thought that was really neat, um, but I had no idea, I didn't have the foresight to realize the real possibilities that neural networks, AI machine learning could do to biology and drug discovery. And I think maybe that's why I was actually um, chosen, because I'm very, not very good at looking forward, but looking back. I think about, there's no doubt that we're in a revolution right now. We might all have different opinions about where in that arc of a, a revolution we are, but there's no doubt machine learning is having, going to have, is having, is, will have a huge impact on what we do and will benefit patients in a really important and meaningful way. But as I look back, I think about other revolutions. You know, I was a young um, scientist at a biotech company in the early 90s, and combinatorial chemistry was going to change the world. It was going to revolutionize drug discovery. Then it was uh, SAR by NMR and fragment-based crystallography. It was going to change the drug discovery, change the world. Then I was a faculty member and the human genome was published. And then I was ended up at a company called Deco Genetics that was using human genetic to find targets. That was going to change drug discovery forever. It was going to find all the new targets. And certainly, the genomics revolution is, I think, one that's really important to pay attention to. It has revolutionized things. It has changed things dramatically. Um, and then I'm at the Broad and been here for over 10 years and have seen CRISPR-based technology, genome editing technologies, new modalities of therapeutics coming on, and that's impacting. But I have to admit, this seems to me to be something different. Um, and it, to me, it, there's a couple differences. One, um, the impact on biology, it's not just drug discovery. When I think about ML, I think we're going to hear over the symposium, let's remember that it's not just drug discovery. Machine learning is really powerful for finding new targets, finding new drugs, and finding new patients. I can't think of another revolution where such a broad impact on drug discovery. All of those things are really going to benefit us, and there's no doubt machine learning is and will have a bigger impact on all of those activities. As I also think back about genomics and now thinking about machine learning. We've seen mistakes in the past where there wasn't a great connection between academia and industry. And I think about um, early 90s when people were trying to patent genes and data sets were going into companies. And I think that is going to happen. We know that many of the great data sets that are helping people understand PK or metabolism of drugs and learning from that, that data exists within industry, doesn't really exist within academia. But I think we, what's really an opportunity here is we have to continue to focus on where are those data sets, how do we ensure that we keep these at, uh, lines open between industry and academia. And I think this conference in particular really exemplifies how we're doing really well in this area. There's an amazing set of both academic and industrial scientists here. Um, really excited to see that, and I hope that we continue this conference and continue that attitude. So with that, I want to introduce um, our keynote speaker today. Daphne Kohler, um, really remarkable. I'll say lots of wonderful things, but first let's start. She was a professor of computer science at Stanford for 18 years, remains an adjunct professor, really led much of the seminal work in this field um, during those days. 2012, left to start and co-found Coursera. Then in 2016, became the chief uh, computing officer at Calico, and is currently CEO and co-founder of Incitro a company that we really know is having huge impact, and we'll hear about that today, I'm sure. She's clearly a leader in the field. Um, we all know her papers. We all know her work, over 300 papers um, over the years. Many, many awards. If you just go to her Wikipedia page, I'm not going to list all of them, but National Academy of Sciences this year, um, MacArthur Fellow, Time Magazine is one of her most influential people. The list goes on and on. I met... Um, uh, 
Daphne when she was uh, at Calico, and I think what really impressed me from the very beginning and what's really special to me is I think about, I've met many bilingual scientists over the years, but it's really rare to find those people who can really ask the right questions. A computer scientist who understands biology and can ask the right biological questions. Those kinds of And I think um, Daphne exemplifies exactly that. So let me just hand it off to our keynote speaker, Daphne Kohler. Thank you.